Keeping websites up and running error-free is a huge task. There is a whole server infrastructure behind the scenes handling all of the load and computational needs that runs websites like the one that you're watching on right now. And a vital piece of that infrastructure is the type of memory and for the most part, ECC memory in servers is extremely important for uptime. So let's look at how ECC memory is different from non-ECC memory that is commonly used in our personal computers, how it works, what are the advantages of using ECC memory, and does the standard computer user really need it? Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Sabrum we love to make and talk tech. So if that's what you're into, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. ECC simply stands for Error Correction Code. ECC is a type of memory that is used in large servers and other industrial computers where error-free operation isn't a nice to have, but a necessity. ECC memory is used to ensure stable operations for that server. ECC memory is different from non-ECC memory in that it uses error correction codes to repeatedly check stored data for any errors and revert it back to a stable state. This means that the probability of data corruption, server crashes, and overall other types of IT nasty business goes way down. Puget System ran benchmarks to check the real difference that ECC memory makes, and they found out that ECC memory has a failure rate of 0.09%, while non-ECC memory, on the other hand, had a failure rate of 0.6%. That is a huge difference, especially when applied to huge server centers. ECC memory and non-ECC memory are also different from each other physically. ECC memory modules have a chip count divisible by three or five when you count the number of black chips on each module. ECC typically has an extra chip compared to its non-ECC counterpart. The extra chip module on the ECC RAM stick is the error detection and correction chip. This is where the extra computation for the error correction happens. The remaining chips are used to store the data that is sent to the CPU whenever it is called for, similar to a non-ECC memory stick. ECC memory uses a technique called parity to detect errors. You see, all computer data is stored in 8-bit groups called bytes, but the parity method involves by adding a ninth bit to the binary code. This ninth bit is used to check the data for errors. This is because bits in these groups can randomly flip from a zero to one or vice versa and can have either a major or minor stability issue or affect calculations in your computer. Now parity can detect the errors but not correct them. The parity method alone is only useful for small amounts of data, but as soon as the data gets larger, running a parity method like this makes the whole process very slow and parity really doesn't correct the error. It detects it and then the error is corrected by reloading the data. ECC takes parity to the next level. It uses multiple parity bits that are assigned to larger groups of data to detect and correct single bit errors. Because most computers use 64 bits to move data, Instead of generating one parity bit for every eight bits of data, ECC generates seven extra bits per 64 bits of data. Using a complex mathematical algorithm on the extra seven bits of data, this ensures that the other 64 bits are correct. That brings us to the advantages and disadvantages of using ECC memory. While ECC is very useful in preventing any data corruption and rooting out any errors or most errors, it can can be noticeably slower than its non-ECC counterpart, so it means a reduction in processing speed. But for industries where ECC is used, like massive data farms, servers for financial institutions, and servers for big web services that run 24-7, a 1-2% to reduction in speed is worth it if it means preventing critical data from being lost. A server crash or error could mean losing a lot of money, data, or security 
security. And since industries like financial services handle huge amounts of data at the same time, it might take hours, if not days, for such errors to be reviewed, detected, and then corrected. A server crash or error could mean a loss of money, data, or security. And since industries like financial services handle huge amounts of data at the same time, it can take hours, if not days, for such errors to be reviewed or detected if ECC is not used. Similarly, if a tech company like Google doesn't use ECC memory on their servers, it could mean a lot of their services would be affected by frequent crashes and data loss. That would not be a good look for a company that specializes in cloud services. So even though there might be a slight hit on performance, for these types of enterprises, it's totally worth it. So as an average computer user or tech head, you might be thinking this ECC memory thing sounds pretty cool. And if it's used by big tech companies, then do I need it too? Well, here's the thing. With the brand new DDR5 spec, ECC is actually part of the standard, meaning that the average user looking to build or upgrade to a new system, you can benefit from ECC as a standard user. This means better stability whether you are playing a game or working on a computer science experiment. ECC is even more important for DDR5 because of the huge speeds that these can run at. For older systems that use DDR4 RAM, depending on if you are Team Blue or Team Red, the cost of entry might be either quite high or quite low, or just might not be compatible at all. AMD are quite well known for not locking their older CPUs away from ECC, leaving it up to motherboard manufacturers to support it, which many did. Intel users, on the other hand, may find it a little bit more difficult to benefit from ECC because Intel typically lock their CPUs unless you paid a little bit extra. But if you are looking to build the cheapest possible build, then you can save a buck for sure by going for a non-ECC pair of RAM sticks. But with DDR5 becoming a necessity for most, if not all, new AMD and Intel chips, the average user can benefit from the same technology as these big tech companies. No one likes it when your system crashes and losing all of your work is even more heartbreaking. So the same way you might run a RAID system in your PC for those just-in-case situations, running ECC also helps too. Yes, you might lose out on a couple of frames in your favorite game, but for me personally, I would rather take the reliability over those couple of extra frames in my games. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. If you found this video interesting, then make sure to hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.